This is Mr. McCord's class, ICP, Unit 6, Lab Number 4, where it usually is. This is going to be more about demonstrating what happens in this lab typically. What we're going to focus on is a type of reactions called decomposition reactions, where we take one chemical, one kind of chemical, like this guy right here, okay? And it doesn't react with any other chemical, it simply breaks down into other things. It could be two other chemicals or three other chemicals, it doesn't really matter. What defines this as a decomposition reaction is that we start with one chemical, it reacts with nothing else, but the way it breaks or rearranges its atoms with itself makes something new. In this case, the chemical that's going to be decomposing is hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Now, based on how this reaction shakes out, one molecule of H2O2 is not enough to make what we expect in the products, which would be H2O and O2. The camera's having a trouble picking that. H2O2 should turn into H2O and O2. But just one of these is not going to have enough atoms to change into one of these and one of these. So our balancing should show that we need two molecules of H2O2 to rearrange their atoms to make two H2Os and one O2. All right, we can check this with the balancing. If I have two H2O2s on my reactant side, that means I've got a total of four H's. And four O's. Two times the two and two times the two. It's kind of like distributing in math. That number of H's and O's on the left side should be equal to what I get on the right side. Okay. I want to make sure I have four H's and four O's on the product side to be formed from this many H's and O's. Currently, I have two H's right here, and a total of one, two, three, three O's. So I'm coming up short. They're not equal to each other. All right? To get more H's, if I put a coefficient of two here, two times the two H's I already have, should give me four H's, which matches two times the one O I have here gives me two O's plus the two O's I already have here, which is also four O's. Now that matches. Two H2O2's should be able to turn into two H2O's and one O2. Now, we actually want to see what this reaction looks like, so that's what the next part is going to be about. So, a decomposition reaction takes some chemical and breaks it down into two or three or four other chemicals. Now, we want to start with just one kind of chemical, one chemical formula on the left side. So, no this plus that and then our arrow. It just has to be this arrow. We may have two of them or three of them in our balancing, but there is only one kind of chemical on the left side, only one chemical formula to represent. Now, in this case, this chemical reaction equation is for hydrogen peroxide, something that you can pick up at not any supermarket or pharmacy. Right? It usually comes in a brown bottle like this. And typically, it is listed as 3%, which means 3% of the solution the liquid inside here is hydrogen peroxide, and the rest of it is water. Now, 
hydrogen peroxide is always decomposing. It's always breaking down into water and O2. So if you've had a bottle of hydrogen peroxide in your cabinet for years and years, you probably want to replace it every once in a while. But it does decompose pretty slowly. We lose about 0.5% of hydrogen peroxide a year. So if I just had this sitting in my cabinet for a year, it would be down to about 2.5%, and then it would be down to about 2% the next year, and then so on and so on. Now, if this is turning into water and oxygen gas, I should be able to see bubbles, but I can't. This reaction happens so slowly that it's not even noticeable. I can get real close up to this and look at the hydrogen peroxide real close, and nothing. So I need to step this up a little bit. I don't want to wait forever to see or test and figure out if this is actually decomposing or not. I want to see it happen in front of my eyes. So we're going to change a couple things about how we do this. First thing we can do is add energy to it. Okay? To make a reaction go faster, we can add in heat or electricity or light. But in this case, hydrogen peroxide can be explosive, so heat, electricity, things like that are probably not the best idea. We don't want to accelerate the reaction any more than necessary. And in fact, we put hydrogen peroxide in brown bottles to keep them from reacting before you need them. For our sake, we do want the reaction to happen, but if you're buying this at a store, you probably want it for the hydrogen peroxide, not what it's going to decompose into. So. We make the bottles brown to keep as much light out as possible to keep our stuff inside, our hydrogen peroxide, from decomposing faster. As it takes in that energy, it's more likely to break up at a faster rate. So typically, we don't want this to happen faster. Um, and in our case, for safety reasons, we don't want it to happen that way by just adding in energy. Now, another way we can make the reaction go faster is a catalyst, a chemical that doesn't change the reaction equation but it makes it go faster. We essentially provide a shortcut, a chemical that helps our atoms rearrange in some way that works a lot more efficiently. Again, our reaction equation stays the same. The new chemical, the catalyst, does not change any of this or the amount of energy that is released, absorbed from the chemical reaction, how stable things get. It just changes how fast it is able to happen. Okay? One catalyst that we can use for this reaction is called manganese dioxide or manganese Roman numeral 4 oxide. MnO2. It's a black powder. Or maybe a lightish gray, depending on how you classify your colors. So if I add this into my beaker of hydrogen peroxide, I should see it decompose a lot faster into the water and oxygen gas I should get. Here we go. Okay, we got some fizzing, which is good. So that's the oxygen gas being released. The hydrogen peroxide inside here is breaking down into that O2 gas, and it's also making water in here. So as long as we've got catalyst in here, we shouldn't have any hydrogen peroxide left. It should just be water and O2. We're all changing that, decomposing it into those two products. But this still isn't super spectacular, so we're going to step it up a little bit. Okay. Aside from just using a catalyst, we can also increase the concentration of the reactant, in this case the hydrogen peroxide. Instead of using the store-bought 3% that you can usually find, we're going to use lab-grade 30% hydrogen peroxide instead. I have here in this bottle. A higher concentration means more of this solution is hydrogen peroxide which means I've got more stuff to react with in here. You can already see a little bit of fizzing from the leftover manganese dioxide in there. Okay, I'm going to throw a big chunk in, you'll be able to see the big difference. Now that's already too hot to touch. This reaction works so quickly and releases so much energy at once that it's enough to boil the water inside of this flask. So not only do we decompose our hydrogen peroxide into oxygen, 
which makes the bubbles, and water, that water then also boils, which is why we get that big steam cloud coming out. Now, we don't want the reaction to work that fast. So higher concentration, good. The catalyst we're picking could be a little less vigorous. So to control our reaction better, we're going to use a different catalyst. That catalyst is potassium iodide, Ki, dissolved in water. All right, and we're going to do this on a bit of a larger scale once more to kind of settle out this experiment. Okay, time for the catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. We've got our hydrogen peroxide, again, 30% higher concentration, down in the bottom of this big flask, along with some food coloring to make it red so you can see it better. Also just to, you know, have it the school colors, as well as some dish soap that'll help us to catch the oxygen gas that is released from this reaction. Right? Our catalyst is going to be potassium iodide, something that will make the reaction go faster, but not so vigorously as the MnO2 did in the previous example with all the steam. Got it all mixed up and ready to go. So all we have left to do is add the catalyst and see what happens. So our hydrogen peroxide is decomposing into oxygen gas. It's being caught by the dish soap making this foam. And move this to this dish so I can catch the results. There it goes. We call this reaction elephant toothpaste for obvious reasons. It's going a little bit out of control. Now this makes you know, this foamy mess, and it's great and it's fun, but if we want to make sure that there's actually oxygen gas that's being made from this reaction, so that this is actually something interesting that's happened and it's not just air inside there, we can test for oxygen with a flame. After all, oxygen is an important part of what drives a flame, along with heat and fuel. So I've got my heat, I've got my fuel, I'm going to light the end of this sponge. Right. So I've got my flame going. Now I want to make sure that it can happen. I want to see if I can relight a dying flame. So I'm going to get the tip just fairly orange here. Pull this out. So it's smoldering. Glowing. And then if I've got enough oxygen to relight this, let's see. I can relight it. Let's see if I can go for a second time. 